Five Nights at Freddy's has become one of the biggest gaming franchises in the, in the sphere right now, and that's obvious due to its massive fan base that's so passionate and eager for the next game in the series. That was only made evident when FNAF announced its official 10 year anniversary schedule, which was automatically met with suspicion and inspection by the fans. One of the biggest outliers here was a collab announcement, which automatically made people assume FNAF was coming to Fortnite. However, before we get into that, let's zoom out and see what the whole 10 year anniversary is really about and how they made a masterclass of a celebration. Minus one big thing. FNAF is probably in contention with big game Undertale to be just behind Minecraft in one of the biggest indie games of all time. It has already reached mainstream popularity and has even gotten its own movie. That is going to be spawning a franchise with multiple more movies. Anyways, one of the best things FNAF has done is try to incorporate its fans and its fan games into its main hemisphere of announcements. This is only evident in the 10 year anniversary as the first two anniversary specials are fan games themselves, being My Pop Goes and The Joy of Creation. These have been long running fan games for almost as long as FNAF itself that have received support from Scott Cawthon, the creator of FNAF himself. This is a really cool initiative that Scott and the team at FNAF has done and it really just shows you how good of a developer and fan base manager Scott is. While these fan games are my cup of tea and my computer can't even play them, they do look super cool and I recommend you checking them out if you like FNAF and want some more of the gameplay. August 3rd saw the release of a VIP interactive novel from FNAF. FNAF has released almost hundreds of books, what it seems like, in its universe and they do seem to be pretty interesting. While I myself have not read any of them, I remember some of my friends at school being interested in the original Silver Eyes book and I would imagine these books are similar in the story. While the lore influence are very obviously in the air about these books, it's clear that they have a strong fan base if they've been going for this long. And to see Scott release more and more books, especially this one for free, is a very good sign. August 4th was a big day as it was a Scott Cawthon interview with Daco. If you don't know, Daco had an interview with Scott Cawthon years ago, almost five whole years ago. And ever since then, people have been clamoring for another interview. That's only made more heavily wanted due to the release of the FNAF movie, which has had more and more questions and comments about it as it's been released. And this interview did not disappoint. This offered a whole new limelight on not only the movie, but Security Breach, the DLC, and both the Help Wanted games. This was especially important for Security Breach as people have been clamoring for answers on why it was such a mess at release. Sky himself took responsibility for this mess, especially about the story. Scott revealed that he himself did not tell the people at Steel Wool what the actual story was about in Security Breach, rather just little tidbits and necessary elements that had to be included. This is obviously a very bad decision by Scott and I'm glad he's owning up to it. Telling people to have certain elements of a plot but not telling them the whole thing so they can flesh onto it is a main reason why Security Breach was such a failure and a disappointment. Not to mention the massive amount of bugs and glitches but we'll ignore that. Not only this, but he talks about the struggles he had with the FNAF movie and how almost one bad review led him to, into a near depressive episode until he found out that the fans absolutely loved the movie. I recommend you checking out the interview itself, condensed versions can be found online on the FNAF subreddit, or just watching the interview itself. It's not a long watch and it's super informative if you're a fan of FNAF. And here come the biggest announcements of the 10 year anniversary. On August 5th, it was announced a FNAF collab would be coming. This is a very rare occurrence as FNAF doesn't really collab with a lot of games or companies at all. Sure, you have the crappy merch like the fidget spinners. But to see an actual FNAF collab with a game is super rare and something we haven't really seen from the franchise before. Of course, being the king of collaborations, Fortnite was the number one answer to this question. Fuel was only added to this fire when leakers found out Fortnite would be having an update on August 6th, which would make sense with the rearrangement of the 10 year anniversary schedule as the announcement would come a day before the update. So people hammered for FNAF in Fortnite hard. I've never seen a fan base on Twitter be so rallied up and supportive of a game franchise being in Fortnite. I mean, if you were on Twitter, you definitely saw how crazy it got and how many people were absolutely going insane just because of the possibility of Freddy in Fortnite. Yet, upon a six hour wait, fans were devastated when FNAF announced they would be collabing with Dead by Daylight. Now, I don't play Dead by Daylight and I would much rather have a Fortnite collab as I actually do play Fortnite from time to time but Dead by Daily is the perfect game for FNAF to collab with. 
If you don't know, Dead by Daylight is basically the Smash Bros of horror. It features horror icons like Freddy, Jason, and all your main culprits, and to have FNAF in there to be representative of the indie game space would be fantastic, and it's great to see that it's finally happening. Not to mention, fans have been wanting this collab for almost the whole time since FNAF has been released. There's accounts from 2020 begging for this collab, and it's great to see this finally happening. However, the biggest announcement of the whole 10 year anniversary would come the next day, and that would be in the form of a Steelwool announcement. Now, based on it being Steelwool, people were expecting one of two things, either Help Wanted 2 DLC or a brand new game announcement. Obviously, people would have preferred a brand new game announcement, and that is what we got. The brand new game, Five Nights at Freddy's Secret of the Mimic, was officially announced to be coming in 2025, and fans are going wild. The tweet's already gotten 44,000 likes and 1.6 million views, and people are theorizing every little thing about the trailer. However, we don't really know much. As of right now, we know the game takes place in 1979, and that the mimic is in it, but that's basically all we know. Now, I am not a super FNAF fan at all. I probably don't know half the lore better than half you guys watching. However, my two cents is that the game will switch between time settings. We know for sure that the game takes place in 1979, but the tweet says, to see the future, sometimes you need to understand the past. My understanding is that it could possibly be a time switch game where you switch between 1979 and the more modern times. This has even been done in the franchise before with Into the Pit, which features time travel mechanics, however, that could be a little janky. I'll leave more reputable sources to be theorizing about this game. However, one thing I can talk about is the downsides of this anniversary. Now, while it's been great to see all these announcements, and especially the first looks at the second FNAF movie, especially you know, the official confirmation that Toy Bonnie and the rest of the toys and withered animatronics will be in the movie, there is one big downside, and that is none of these things are really coming out until next year. Now, yes, I am ignoring the fan games and books that is being released during this anniversary. The big projects that are being announced during this anniversary, being the Dead by Daylight collab and the Five Nights at Freddy's Secret of the Mimic, aren't being released until next year. That is a whole year plus wait until we actually get this content. Maybe I'm being a little bit of a baby here, but it is nice to have something revealed or announced just a couple months before rather than a whole year. While it does help stir up publicity and talk about the game, having a whole year wait for a game is really demoralizing. However, that doesn't mean any of these projects are going to be bad. The trailer for Secret of the Mimic looks fantastic and unlike anything we've seen from the franchise before, and from the first looks of the FNAF 2 movie, it looks great. While I mean no hate to Scott Cawthon or Steel Wool or any of the developers, seeing not really any major, major game figure release at this time is a little disappointing, However, it's still nice to celebrate this game and how far it's come in the 10 years that it's been around. But what do you think about the 10 year anniversary? You think it was great, underwhelming, overwhelming? Whatever it is, it is perfectly valid and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If I got anything wrong or got any misconceptions, make sure to leave it in the comments as I'm not perfect and I don't know everything about FNAF. I hope you enjoyed anyways and I'll see you guys next time.